Okay, here we go. quote, I think 3.6 seconds to 62 for this car. I get the feeling that with the right conditions, with the right road surface, that was pretty dry. There was a little bit of dampness on the road. You're going to get under 3.6 seconds. It just is brutal. As soon as it grips up, you feel it go. Now in recent weeks, I featured some big SUVs on the channel, from the seven seat Skoda Kodiak, the new VW Touareg. I went to Wales recently to drive the Ineos Grenadier. And as many of you will know, I'm currently running a Land Rover Defender 90 75th anniversary edition as my Hendy Group Long Termer. And whenever I drive cars like that, I'm always talking about them being great for my lifestyle, the kind of things I need from a car. Being able to put my bike in the back, transporting the dogs around, just doing stuff in the countryside that needs the practicality of an SUV. But actually, I'm more of a fan of a fast wagon. And for those of you who followed me right from the get-go of the channel, at the beginning of Petroped, I was running an Audi S4 Avant. In fact, I've had two of them and I really like a fast wagon. So behind me should be my ultimate car because it's definitely a fast wagon. Behind me is the BMW M3 Competition Touring. Now I drove M3 and M4 competition when they came out a couple of years ago now, I guess. And I've also driven the M4 competition Cabriolet, which is a car I really, really liked. But up until a couple of days ago, I hadn't been able to drive the M3 Touring. I've been a passenger in one a couple of times because a good friend of mine, Mr. Joe Achilles, who I'm sure many of you will know, has one of these. And I've been in his car and it's a very, very impressive car. I'm sure you all know the stats by now, but underneath that bonnet is the incredible S58 inline six cylinder twin turbocharged engine. It produces 510 PS, 650 Newton meters of torque. And that goes to an eight speed auto transmission, four wheel drive, naught to 60, 3.6 seconds. So I think it, it safely ticks the box of fast wagon, that's for sure. I think they look fantastic, especially this is a particularly Batman spec, this one. But I want to, I want to approach the elephant in the room because it's, it's quite a big elephant and quite a small room. And that is how much these things cost because they're not cheap. So they start from just over 86,000 pounds. I went onto the BMW configurator this morning to configure this car, which has a couple of options on it, but unfortunately they are quite expensive options. So, as I said, the base price is £86,500. This car, however, has something called the M Pro Pack, which includes the carbon ceramic brakes. Now, that's an £8,395 option. It also has the M Carbon Pack, which includes some nice trick bits of carbon on the outside, door mirror caps, front splitter, some nice stuff around the rear, but it also includes the beautiful carbon bucket seats. For that, a £7,000 option. So all in this car is just a smidge over £102,000. And you can go more wild than that because this is a standard paint color. If you go for one of the nice paint color options, if you choose different wheels, um, if you go for a slightly different interior, I got one of these up to £108,000. That is a lot of money for a BMW estate car. So it best be good, right? I also have another big problem with this car, but let's go around the back and I'll explain more. I mean, first up, what a rear of the car. I just think this thing looks epic from the back. I love the quad exhausts. I love the diffuser. I love this little lip spoiler. And the back end and the styling of the car generally in its squat aggressive stance, I absolutely love. But my problem with the car isn't whether you can get two dogs in the boot, because you can, can't you? You definitely get these two. Um, my problem is 
Everyone in the world on YouTube has had one of these. They either own one, run one, or have tested one. I'm quite late to the party, really. I mean, obviously Joe's got one. He's done so much to here's my mate Imran at Evolve's got one. Everybody's got one. So when I thought about this review, I'm thinking, what am I gonna do? So first thing is, well, we'll think about what it's like as a dog carrier. It's a quite quick dog carrier. Although if you're not careful, if you accelerate too hard, these two will be like squashed against the rear window. So the plan for the video is I'm just gonna live with the car and use it for the things that I would use a daily car for, whether that's transporting these two Herberts around or my bike or running things to the shops. I'm gonna take it out on the, some nice roads and put it through its paces. I've driven it quite a bit so far off camera. I just wanted to get my head around it really. And it is a very, very quick car. Um, and, and it's very planted because it's got the X-Drive system. It's got a lot of traction and it really is a very impressive car. But before we do the living with bit, would you like to go and play with the pheasants, you two? Um, I'm just gonna show you the, the main driver's air and cockpit, talk to you about a few of the things I've discovered in that. And then, then we can go out for some drive. So you go down there. I'll lift you out more gently because you're an old girl now, aren't you? There you go. There is a technique to getting in this car because the side bolsters on these carbon buckets are really high. You almost have to lift yourself over and then drop yourself down into them. But once you're in the seat, they are mega. And it's quite interesting. If you watch my M2 review recently, which had the same seats in it, but it was manual and the, the pedals were kind of offset a little bit to the right and you kind of felt like your legs were out there and the, for me, the seat didn't quite feel right. It doesn't feel like that at all in this car. The only other thing, just in terms of seating position for me, I've got very long legs. On my left leg, there's a, a foot rest on the left-hand side for your left foot. And I could do with that not being there, to be honest, because it, it just, my, my left foot, I just want to stretch it out a little bit more. Everything else though, absolutely spot on. And I see why Joe raves about it from a driving point of view and driving position point of view. Um, curved screen, it's really nice spending some time with that actually and kind of learning the best way to interact with it and where things are and, and, and finding out features and functions. I've used Apple CarPlay quite a lot, um, but the, you know, it's, it's really easy to navigate. And then just in terms of driving and drive modes, you've got the two configurable M buttons on the steering wheel. We'll talk more about that when, when we're out and about driving. But when, when you're in here, just the carbon trim everywhere on the steering wheel, on this center console here, along the dash, obviously the back of these seats, you know you're in a really special place. And I quite like this interior spec because it's very subtle. Um, it, you know, I know some of the colors you can go for are quite bright and outlandish, but it kind of goes with the exterior. You've just got black everything. Um, and it, it is quite under the radar. I like it very much. But next time you see me, we'll be off on some adventure in the car putting it through its paces. But safe to say so far this week, I'm really enjoying myself. Oh, well, first up in our week of duties in the M3 uh, is um, we've got to take the dogs to the clippers because it's clip day today. The cool thing about a car of this format, a state car, fast wagon is it's brilliant for the pups so they can go in the back now i don't have a uh, dog cage to stop them coming into the main part of the car but i don't actually need that because they're not big enough <laughs> to get over the back seats if you had a bigger dog i don't know a labrador or something of that size you'd have a proper roll uh, roll cage a proper dog cage um but it's only a couple of minutes run up to the dog groomers. The other thing is, I'm sure many of you follow the channel, if we're going on a longer journey, then normally we'll use the boot for luggage and we'll put the dogs on the back seats uh, in harnesses, because they actually prefer that. They like being in the car with us. And we like it too, because we can see them and stuff. But yeah, the, the whole point for me of a fast wagon like this is it's brilliant if you've got a dog or two. The weather today, though, is absolutely foul. There. <laughs> How? You're not shaking, are you? What are you shaking for? Here we go. 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 Here we go.
we are. Let's go and pick up the puppies. Here you go. Da -da -da. Oh. Da -da. Look at you. How cute do you look? Now then, should we go, Goodwood? Yeah. You have to sit down. Sit. Sit. I'm going to shut the gate. Here we are at Goodwood. So I just thought I would pop in. It's the annual Goodwood Marshals track day. Um, and I wanted to just pop in and say hello to everyone, give them my support. And what better car to turn up to a track day in than an M3 Touring? I mean, I'd love to be taking it on track, obviously, but that ain't gonna happen. Um, but yeah, um, this is, I guess, for this kind of car, again, something it's perfect that turning up to track days or motor racing, because it's that, you know, it's certainly a standout car. It looks amazing. It's got the performance. Um, and to be frank, it would probably keep up with most things that will be going around the track today. The weather hasn't been very kind for the Marshalls track day though, unfortunately. <laughs> it's been really, really grim. Anyway, let's find out who's here. I reckon I can spot a car that belongs to a good mate of mine, Mr. Rick the Spud, I reckon. Wow that's cold but always good to catch up with uh, all my old mates so mates from Anthony James cars were there mr. Robert Denton the legend was there and Rick the spud although unfortunately didn't actually get to see any cars driving around because I'd been there about five minutes and somebody unfortunately stuffed it into the tire wall just coming out of Lavant red flagged the track and as there was only about 40 minutes to go till the end of the session that was it they've called it so track day over it's nearly dark but the next thing we need to do with this car is do some proper driving. So we'll take it to some nice roads, put it through its paces, because this thing is just mega. Now first up, driving this thing in a normal fashion when you don't want to drive around with your hair on fire is just really lovely. It's such a comforting relaxing joyous place to be on a journey the suspension's super smooth now you've got a number of different settings but if you keep it in the comfort setting it's nice and compliant it soaks up the bumps and it's a really relaxing drive if you just have it in normal mode when it's changing gear for itself it'll get up through the gears as high as it can I'm currently in eighth it's just very relaxing it's not intimidating at all in fact, it's very un M car. And then you've got the practicality of it being an estate. It's just a brilliant, brilliant family wagon. So it would be perfect for just a day out with the missus. So earlier this week, that's exactly what I did. Me and Tracy went out for a drive at the weekend. It wet today. Oh God, it's just awful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's such a horrible day we decided to take a drive out in the M3 and we've come all the way over to very East Sussex. Very East Sussex. To the Rathfinney wine estate because these guys make our favorite sparkling wine. They do. Can't be called champagne because it doesn't come from champagne but it's as good as any oh, champagne you're ever gonna drink. It's really, really good. It's English sparkling wine, it's, it's fantastic. Lovely. So we've ordered it for Christmas for the last few years online and we thought, do you know what? I reckon we should take a drive out because it's a horrible day and we're going to sit inside so we've been into the shop we bought our christmas stocks it is a massive estate <laughs> it's huge i mean it's a mile from the road yeah it's just literally is a mile from the road um but yeah beautiful so on the way back you've now had about an hour and 20 minutes hour and a half in the car i reckon you're perfectly suited to give the peddlers your tracy lowdown on the M3 Touring. You are a lover of fast wagons, are you not? I am indeed. But you also like your big SUVs because you love the Defender. So we need to kind of position this um, and, and give it a Tracy score out of 10. Thanks for that. <laughs> but yeah, look at this. 
I mean, it's such a shame it's cloudy because the view that way is absolutely amazing. amazing. Flood. How many times do you see a triangle like that? Oh, I bet that Tesla had no problem getting through the floods. And there's no flood, but we know that just round this corner. Yeah, there's quite a lot of water. <laughs> okay, now let's, I've done lots of off-roading recently in cars that can wade into nice depth. This is, um, it's quite meaty, this. Well, yeah, even so, that's quite a lot of water. Yeah. Yep, so safe to say, M3 Touring, yeah, this isn't great either. Does floods. Oh no, is that... Has he broken down there? No, yet? I think he's probably deciding whether Just being he could possibly come through. You're joking, aren't you? I'm going to let him go. Come on. Perhaps it is broken down. No, he's just being a wuss. No. How anyway. Rude. <laughs> how, rude. how rude. So, come on then. What do you think? Excuse me? What do you think? Well, we need to negotiate my appearance fee first. <laughs> oh, oh, it's got like that, has it? <laughs> After the Roma video and all the lovely comments, you've got an appearance fee coming. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a really, I mean, it's a great car. Loads of space. Um, it feels really solid. I've always loved um, this car and uh, the car with the four-wheel drive. Uh, Four-wheel drive, fast estate, right up your street. Yeah, exactly. So um, it's really comfortable. What and do you think of the seat? Well, I love it, but but uh, for me, yeah, being a lady, a lady, um, I'm not quite sure about this carbon fibre piece that sits in the middle of the seat. Yeah, I think it's okay, maybe. Yeah, for you, but. Um, Ladies like to sit in the chair and kind of cross their legs. So do you know what this, and we haven't planned this at all, Lou says exactly the same thing about the seat ah, in Joe's car. Okay, good. Well <laughs> so when we, when we do the Christmas ball, you'll have to exchange notes about the carbon Indeed. fibre bit in the middle. Yeah. Getting in and out's a bit tricky, don't you think, with a big, really heavy side bolster? Uh, well, maybe for you, I'm perhaps a bit more athletic. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so uh, seat's comfy, you like the practicality. Um, do you want to know how much it is? Well, I'm going to guess that it's six figures. Oh, okay. They 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 start at just over £85,000. Yeah, this, this one we're sat in toys. is £102,000. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's lots of car. It's a lot of car, it's a lot of car, and it's it's a lot of performance as well, it's a quick car. Although it's it's a very wet day today, so we're not gonna, you know, do do too much. No. Sorry, what? Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he gets the thumbs up, are you gonna be brave and give it a score out of 10? Oh, no, I don't score cars. <laughs> That's your job. Well, what, what do you think of the styling on the outside? <clears throat> it's quite Batman, this one, isn't it? It's Batman spec. I think, you know, it's kind of, because of the colour and everything, it's quite understated and yep. it's just just got lots of power hiding under the bonnet, so. Yeah. Thumbs up. Of course. I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, should we, um, should we talk about your feet then? We'll leave these two, these guys <laughs> to, to get on with the rest of the video and we'll talk about your feet. Yeah. Okay. But this is an M car, right? You want to exploit that 510 PS under the bonnet, get that S58 singing. In order to do that, there's quite a lot of different options for you. You've got the little M mode button here. If you push that you through this main screen, you can go into sport or track mode. The thing I like about that is it changes the display. It changes the head up display. So I've got a big prominent gear indicator telling me the gear I'm in. I can see my revs and I can see my speed and I can see the speed limit of the road as well. And then I've got the two configurable M1 and M2 buttons. So I've configured the M1 button to my liking. Drivetrain in sport, suspension in comfort, steering in sport plus, and the gear change in sport plus. It's just a bit more punchy. I can then move the gear stick just to the right, go into manual override, drop it down a cog or two, and... Oh boy. Yeah, suddenly, you know you're in an M car. 
the pussycat that was in comfort drive granddad mode disappears and it replaces the driving experience with one that you would expect in a full fat M car. This thing is rapid, really, really rapid. And because you've got the X drive system, you've got so much traction out of the corners. I mean, seriously, wow. The turn of speed that this car demonstrates is just addictive really really addictive it doesn't feel like you're in a big car at all it just feels like a nimble it doesn't make a great deal of sound modern day cars are so clogged up with all the filters they need to pass all of the various environmental hurdles that they need to get over but when you find yourself on a stretch of flowing b road this thing's sensational absolutely sensational these carbon ceramics they're incredibly powerful they're nice because they're not horrible when they're cold some carbon ceramics on road cars when you first get into them when they're cold they're a bit dead and a bit squishy and don't really do very much these ones not so much they're pretty much on it from the get-go this car on a nice bit of road it's just mega absolutely mega it's got so much performance and so much to like about it I can see now why it's had such high praise from everybody it's a bloody brilliant thing so what are my final impressions of my week with the M3 Touring? I love it. As a car, I absolutely love it. I mean, it's just right up my street. Big and practical and fast. I think it looks fantastic. Rear end view is my favorite. Now I've got used to those front grills. Front end view is pretty good as well. And when you look at what you can do to it, look at the likes of what Joe's done to his and what Imran's done to his, they just look amazing. To drive, they're just wicked. Absolutely wicked things. <laughs> I mean, come on, what's not to like about that? It's just a seriously impressive car. Is there anything that I don't like about it? Well, yeah, there are a few things actually. First up, oh, we've got traffic, I'm going to have to slow down and put it back into uh, normal drive. These seats are amazing to be sat in. They are super comfortable. Getting in and out of them is a pain. And I kind of knew that that's what to expect. And I could imagine this side bolster probably gets quite a bit of wear. But once you're in them, they're a magnificent seat. They are so supportive and so comfortable. And unlike some carbon lightweight seats that are out there that that are comfortable for maybe an hour these are comfortable for a long long period of time so I definitely spec these even though they're a very expensive option and that leads me to the big thing that I'm not so keen on with the M3 and that's just how expensive they are I mean a base one okay from 85 grand but we just mentioned these seats you want to put them on that's a significant hike in that and you're gonna be in the mid 90s and like i said this one's 102 and i just think that's a lot of money for a bmw estate albeit a very very fast one i love the sweet um infotainment system i think it works really really well at the moment i'm using apple carplay it's a massive great big screen and it works really nicely all of the different drive modes for me they're probably a bit complex i know you can set your own up with the m1 and the m2 buttons but i think there's so many permutations and combinations in there i'm not so sure you need all of those if i'm honest you just need a normal and a sport button <laughs> off you go but i get it people like to customize and dial things in dial the car in so that it suits them and it it fits their driving style but my challenge with this car this week was that so many of my automotive compatriots online had already 
given their view, already had one, either bought one, leased one, or ran one as a long-termer. So a lot of the story's already been told. But my story, my story with the car this week, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've, you know, the, the, the using this car on a daily basis, it's just got so many boxes it can tick. It can carry stuff. It can do a long, comfortable journey with the other half. It can arrive somewhere nice, like a wine estate and, you know, or a, a, a track day. It can carry the dogs to the groomers. It's everything, everything I want a car to be. The only test I didn't do was I didn't put a bike in the back, and I'm sure all of my bikes would fit in this. Not, not all at once, because I have far too many bikes, but, but yeah, good car. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on the BMW M3 Touring. I love it. I just wish they were a bit cheaper. <laughs> Mind you, I guess there is a thought to be said, a one or two year old one of these, once someone else has had a hit of depreciation, and that's an interesting proposition. Definitely. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petrobed for plenty more content to come. And I'll see you on the next film. You take care guys. Drive safe.